from Straw Hut Media. This is Brandy Glanville Unfiltered. So, you know how much I love uh, Below Deck and Kate Chastain. I also happen to love Captain Lee. Why do you love Captain Lee? He's a badass. He is... He does not take shit from anyone. He's just like a gangster. Like you, you're going to listen to him, and I just love him. Does do, would you when you say badass? Like would he punch somebody? No, but he's letting like listen. If you mess up, he's going to fire you. There's no like third chance or second chance. It's like we are running a tight ship. Ooh, that's a thing. <laughs> that, I think he it runs came. A tight ship. I think it came from sailing from or, Captain. Lee. From Captain. <laughs> And he also has these really cute, like, one-off, like, one-liners that are always, like, you've never heard it before, but it's, like, I'm that's as tight as a monkey's butt hole or something. It's not one that he says, or maybe he did, but he says, like, crazy things that you've never heard, and you're like, oh. it just makes you like him. What are you, you not like him. What are you most curious to know from the captain? Well, there's so many stories, um, but I want to know, because there's, like, right now, there's all of this uh, talk on Twitter that he left the show yes and so i want to make sure that that's not true and i need to make sure that or, he's okay yeah or if it is true like what is he doing next well he's he's been just gonna cap, a cap well i mean he would still captain he just wouldn't be on the show i guess i don't know yeah. like that's what we have to figure right, out right. or maybe it's just time for him to go live his best best life on land but i think when you have a love for something like and a passion for that maybe let's figure out all of this stuff Come learn on, about captain bring him on. okay 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 I'm so excited. I've been wanting to talk to you forever, Captain Lee. Well, thank you, Brandy. I've been waiting for this anxiously in eager anticipation. (laughs) I've been watching you from the very beginning, and I have to say you're my favorite captain of the sea. I like everyone, but you are my favorite by far. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I am honored and flattered. Oh, and I think the number one question my um, my audience had for you is, how is your health doing? We're all very concerned. We want to know how the nerve damage is doing. And I'm fine. <laughs> oh, good. You're 100 percent better. I'm not 100 percent. I still I still walk with a slight limp. Some days I hide it better better than others, but uh, I'm getting around just fine. There's nothing. Well, I'm not going to run the Boston Marathon this year. I know they're they're just crushed to hear that news, but right. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I'm getting along just fine. That's amazing. My my actually my sister had nerve damage in her foot, and she couldn't and she couldn't walk for she had to walk hunched over. It was it's super sad, but for over two years she was like walking like looking down at the ground, and she's still s- struggling. Yeah, it's one of those things that. Nerves regenerated about four millimeters a month, if they do at all. Now you can you can waken up or awaken other nerves that will take over for the nerves that aren't responding. But it's very time consuming and just generally a pain in the ass. Oh, I I mean I felt your pain on there because you're such a doer, you're such a go getter, you're always part of like everything and i felt like i was defeated with you i felt like oh i just wanted to hug you i know you're probably not a hugger but I, I, i'm a hugger i am oh okay i just i felt like oh this is not fair why is this happening to this amazing man but do you know what caused it there's a couple of ideas on what caused it uh a lot of people thought it was from my surgeries because i had two surgeries i had a back surgery and i had a neck surgery and both of those came, I came through those with flying colors. In fact, I was three months past my back surgery when this incident happened. And you know how it feels like when you're just walking and you, or you sit down somewhere and you hit your elbow just wrong and you hit your funny bone? Yes, this is not funny. <laughs> and you get that like electric shock that runs all through your arm? Yes. That's what I got in my leg. So it was like, it was like somebody plugged me into a 220 volt outlet, left it there for a Jesus. while. I am so, I'm so sorry that happened. I mean, you're a strong man though. Like you could, if anyone can handle it, you can handle it. Well, thank you. We're, we're getting through it just fine. 
Um, and I don't know, is it congratulations that you, you've like you've left the show or is it is it bittersweet? Are you happy to be retiring or, or are you even retiring? <laughs> I think that the the news that's going around that I'm retiring, I think, is highly exaggerated. <laughs> I have I have no intention of retiring. They're gonna if they're gonna get me off the air, they're gonna fire me, or the fans are gonna say, you know, Jesus Christ, toss this bum out. Um, no. In fact, I come back before the end of this current season. Oh, good. That's good to know. I mean, I obviously I'm looking at Twitter and all the Twitterverse, and everyone has, yeah. you know, an idea. And so I'm like, well, I guess maybe his injuries forced him to, you know retire i didn't know so i'm that's good to hear that you're definitely not retiring yeah no i come back i think i come back for the last four or five episodes awesome that's so awesome so i will be there finish what i started right but even so i don't know my parents are like um they're 73 and 70 yeah they're 73 and 74 and they say they will Mm -hmm. never retire like they're like we like retiring is like giving up on life like they don't the plus they don't want to be around each other that much so they're <laughs> i could not agree with them more i i think retirement is highly overrated i mean for me you can only play so much golf you can only go fishing so much you can only lay in the sun you can only travel so much and before you do enough of any one thing yeah. and it gets boring but I, for some reason, I'm probably very much like your parents. I don't get tired of working. No, I, my dad is like, he cut all of his fingers off on one hand. Um, oh. Yeah, with a skill saw. And he's still a handyman to this day. So, Ouch. yeah, he's fine, though. Like, he, like nothing can hold that man back. <laughs> yeah, talk about overcoming adversity. Yeah. Especially doing what he does. Yeah, we were all like, oh, God, he's just going to hang around the house and annoy all of us. But nope, he's back out at it. And I really feel like it just gives us purpose to have a job. You know what I mean? Like when there's nothing to do, I go insane. I create work for myself. I think we have this innate desire to be productive. Well, most of us. <laughs> uh, most of us. And that that will just never go away. We've got to be doing something. And then we've got to be able to stand back, look at what we've done and go, this is good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And then find another project. Right. Now, do you ever um, regret ever, like re- regret doing this TV show? I mean, obviously you love what you do. You're a captain of the ship, but do you regret putting yourself on camera ever? I think the only time I had any regret about it was... The first five minutes when I was pulling the yacht into the slip and I saw some 50 or 60 production people <laughs> all amassed on the dock waiting for me to get there so they could converge on the boat like ants. They're yeah. like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah, I, I looked at this conglomeration of people and God, there were people with big afros and nose piercings and them. You know, a nail in the middle of their forehead and <laughs> tattoos everywhere. Nobody was wearing anything that even resembled clothes that you would work in. <laughs> they were, you know, cut off jeans, uh, wife beater t shirts. And I thought, oh, what have I gotten myself into? I'm never going to get another job in yachting ever again. These are their these it. are the artistic folks. They make the, they make you fi- you figure it out. They make the show such a success. I mean, you guys are the number one show on Bravo. Well, little did I realize, five minutes after they got on the boat, and I'm watching them work, and I'm watching their professional attitude, and I'm going, you know, you should just go downstairs and slap yourself. Yeah. Because you really, <laughs> you really misjudge these people. Well, yeah, I, we're, we're learning not to judge books by their covers. But I mean, you know, sometimes when we're kind of set in our ways and, you know, you have a high standard on yachts, you need everything to look professional and it has to be a certain way. So I could understand where you might be a little bit like, oh, God, what am I, you know, what am I getting myself into or what am I getting the yacht into? Um, I thought my owner is going to kill me. I'm going to get fired. That's what I was wondering. Do the owners, do they get any say on whether they will be on, they're willing to be on TV or not? Obviously they do. Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah, they enter into a contract with the with the network, and we're allowed to do our wiring and and do all that sort of thing. And because I mean, we literally tear the boat apart. I can imagine. We pull down ceiling panels. We pull down wall panels. We take out furniture, built-in furniture. We disassemble it and. It's a good thing that most owners don't see that. No, trust me. I've, yeah. probably, probably, they'd probably never let us use the boat again. I've seen what they've done to my house. And I'm like, what happened? But then yeah. <laughs> then you come back and it's all back. And you're like, wait, how did they do that? Like, it's, it's okay. Yeah, exactly. It will go back. But it is pretty jarring. That lets you know how professional these people really, really are and how dedicated to their craft. And I couldn't have been more wrong. I, I was so happy that I was. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, look at all of your commercials, like Stud of the Sea. Like, how did your, oh, how is it like when you go out in public now, do like you get recognized all of the time? Like, it took us almost a half an hour to get out of a restaurant. Wow. Last week. And it was just, you know, people wanted a picture. They wanted to come up and shake my hand. And the way that I view it, because I didn't, they don't give anybody a manual on how to be a celebrity. No. You know, when this happens, turn to page 32, paragraph four, <laughs> this is how you deal with it. No, there's none of that. So my I, the way that I look at it is if I can put a smile on somebody's face for 15 seconds of my time or 30 seconds of my time, who in their right mind wouldn't do that? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like you're you're popular and you're there because of your audience and these people that love you so it really i feel like it's our duty to you know stop and take the picture and and be like we're there on tv because they are our fans like they are saying we want to keep you on tv it's what we signed up for yeah i know some celebrities though that are assholes and that are like i'm not doing that i'm like oh my god i hope you get fired i'm kidding yeah, I've, I've I've seen that in action. I, you know, I I've seen it at BravoCon. What? You know, yeah, where people just walk away like they didn't even hear them, or and I go like, wow. Yeah. You've been sitting too close to the Kool Aid Bowl. There's a lot of that at BravoCon. <laughs> I was like, wow, there's some very famous people here. Like, I was just excited to meet everyone because I watch all the shows that you know. Like, I'm I'm a fan of Below Dock. It's my favorite show. Like, I I love it. I was excited to meet you. I'm f- yeah. friends with Kate. I love my Kate. I know you love Kate so much too. Oh, Kate, Kate's my kiddo. And now you're going to be an uncle. She's the original kiddo. Yes. <laughs> you could tell you guys have a very special relationship. Um, I like watching, like, they'll show the old ones back on, like when she was a uh, um, Chief Stew. Mm-hmm. I love watching the old ones. It's, like, very nostalgic for me. Not, not to be mundane or sad, but three years ago when my son passed away. I'm sorry. Uh, Kate found out about it. Went. Straight out of her apartment, straight to the airport, got on a plane and was here without calling, without asking, without telling. That's just the kind of a friend that Kate is. She really is. And you guys are lucky to have each other. And I am really, I I know all about that. She's a very special person. I'm very, yes, she is. And I'm very sorry for your loss and everything. I know. Thank you. Um, I mean, Speaking to that, but not on that same subject, um, like how hard is it to be away from your wife and your loved ones? And how, like, when you do a charter season, how long is that season generally? I think the longest I've been away without coming home was seven months. Oh, wow. Were you doing this when you met your wife? Or is this something that you kind of went into once? It, it was something that I got into. We had a restaurant down in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Beautiful. And it was right on the cusp of the Turks, Turks and Caicos being come, becoming a destination location. But it wasn't quite there. It was close, but it wasn't quite there. The infrastructure wasn't there. And we had a restaurant, beautiful restaurant built out over the water, all open air. We had this huge, beautiful atrium garden in there. And they were building a casino and a hotel just to two or three blocks down from where we were. Well, they don't really have blocks down there. So I'm just using that as a figure of measurement. 
and they made it up two floors and damned if they didn't run out of money. And I said, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am so, so screwed. Here I am, five kids living in the islands, a wife, and we're losing money like it's going out of style because there just wasn't enough people. You know, we needed that, those tourists. Right, absolutely. To keep, yeah, and restaurant business are hard enough. Now they weren't coming. Yeah. Oh. So I was probably about five or six years early. And then I got this opportunity to take a job as a mate. I saw a, a little three by five index card. They use those anymore. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't. I, you and I might be the only one. My kids study on them. Okay. You know what I mean? For school tests. It's like. Okay. So th there's a three by five index card stuck to the wall in the dive shop. And I looked at it and it says, mate wanted for sailboat delivery. No experience necessary. I said, I got this. I can be no experience necessary because I did. Right. As well, with five kids, you better be ready. <laughs> I took the job. I think it paid $50 a day, which in 85, it was it's not, horrible. not the greatest of wage. But no. And, uh, God, I was seasick every day through the whole delivery. I that's what I I wonder how like I have the worst sea legs. I get so nauseous. Like I've not, I mean I've been on like bigger yachts, and even then I have to wear the the bands. Yes. Do they work for you? I mean, alcohol worked better. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. If your New Year's resolution is to save money, which obviously I think we all made that every year, then you have to download Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, and this is something I'm literally doing, you guys. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. You honestly don't know how many times you just push something and it, you're locked in for months on like a $49 subscription. It's insane. And you don't notice it because there's also small ones that are like $3.99. But I've been saying this forever. I want to know what I'm spending and I just don't have the time to figure it out. Did you know that most Americans think they're spending around 80 bucks a month on subscriptions? I can't say the word right now. When the actual total is closer to 200, if you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, like myself, over 3 million people have used Rocket Money Savings. The average person saves up to $720 a year. So simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it. No long hold times, no constant emailing back and forth and not even confusing websites. Stop throwing your money away. Start the new year the right way and download this app by going to rocketmoney.com and slash brandy. That's rocketmoney.com slash brandy. Get the app. Save some money. Don't be stupid. Well, I was seasick the whole time and I came back and I told Marianne and it was funny because when I left, it was the middle of hurricane season mm. and she was scared, scared to, to death. death. Yeah. And she said, she told me, she said, if you go on this trip, she said, I won't be here when you get back. And I said, honey, I said, did you look at the checking account lately? I said, there's $51 in there. I said, good luck trying to get off this rock with $51. And the thing was, you couldn't get a job because the island, it, have you ever read Herman uh, Wilkes' Don't Stop the Carnival? No. Okay, well, Norman Paperman was this banker that decided to move down to the islands and own this hotel, and he knew nothing about island living. And that's what I was. I was the quintessential Norman Paperman. But with in the island laws, you're not allowed as an outsider to hold a job unless there's full employment on the island. Now, it doesn't matter if, if nobody wants that job. You still can't have it. Now, you can invest money and they'll issue you a special work permit for a couple of grand a year. But you couldn't just go out and get a job like running a backhoe or digging a ditch or building a house, nothing like that. You weren't allowed to be hired. Because it would go to the islander before you, even if they didn't want it, you couldn't have it. Yes. And if the, if the islander turned it down, you still weren't getting the job. That's insane. So taking this job on a sailboat was perfect. It was offshore. 
Can't do anything about that. No rules apply. Exactly. And then I was seasick. And I did overcome that. It took me about a year. But I came back and I told Mary Ann. And she, of course, she was still there. And I said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I said, wow. she said, but you get seasick. I said, I'll fix that. Well, how? well, I don't know how, but I'll fix it. Well, just acclimate, right? Yeah, that you just you just can't let it kick your ass. And after enough time at sea and being on boats, it finally went away. Wow, that's intense. That's how I got into yachting. And then I, uh, one of my other experiences in Turks and Caicos was this guy pulled into the harbor right next to our restaurant, and he had this 85-foot yacht. And 85 foot back then it's big, yeah. was like, that was a big boat. And I went, he gave me a tour of it. And I thought the guy was the owner because he was dressed pretty good and certainly knew the boat. And he said, now he says, I'm, I'm just the captain. Just the captain. <laughs> really? I said, this is what you, you do this for a living? I had no clue. I'm from the Midwest. I don't know about yachts and ocean going vessels, nothing. And he said, uh-huh. And then he told me what he got paid. And I said, you get paid to be on this boat. <laughs> Take the owner wherever he wants. That's what I want to be when I grow up. That's so funny. So you kind of fell into it in a lot of ways because of the sailboat. And then it wasn't really a passion until it became a passion. <laughs> Every, everything that I've been successful at, I seem to have just fallen into. It's been an accident. Well, like being on the show. I wasn't supposed to be on the show. I mean, same here, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it was an accident. I was forced into it. Coercion. It works. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Fear of motivation also works. You know, fear of losing your job when your owner says, well, how does Lee feel about being on TV? And your owner looks at you and he goes, Lee feels just fine about being on TV. Right. Don't you, Lee? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say. Yeah, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, it, it's so crazy because like a, a lot of things that, that I ended up modeling because I was tall and thin. I, it wasn't anything that I wanted to do. And then. Well, you're also beautiful. You can't let that slide by. Thank you. Thank you. But you you're know welcome. what I mean? It wasn't something I was seeking out. And then I got a, a crazy divorce mm -hmm. and TV fell into my lap. They're like, oh, you're insane. Let's put you on TV. So like, I, yes, I, like, I just. <laughs> Everything that has been successful for me is, is the same. I kind of just fell into it. It wasn't something that I seeked out. But I'm, I'm so, I think everything happens for a reason. And I think that we're where we're supposed to be. You know what I mean? I've been doing this for 13 years now. And it just it keeps on um, happening. <laughs> this, is, this is my 10th year. Wow. And <laughs> you see the new kids come in every year and you just like, and you can tell the ones that are that are drinking out of the Kool-Aid bowl before they even get there. I feel like I could be a better I, like deckhand than some of the new guys. I want to shake them. Oh, yeah. And, and and it just amazes me. Like, there's something when producers hire our cast, they do it with certain uh, prerequisites that they have in their mind. You know about personality types, and you know they're funny. They have got a sense of humor. You, generally speaking, they're attractive. If not, their personality makes them attractive. Yes. So there's that's the reason they're hired because we can teach them everything else they need to know about. You know, scrubbing a deck, wiping down handrails, and right. and that sort of thing. Uh, and then we put them through a process called STCW, where they learn all they need to know about the basic safety and that sort of thing and all the rules that they have to abide by. And then they have to pass the test. So there's all that involved. And then something seems to happen between that time and when the cameras start rolling. Because as soon as the camera starts rolling, some of them just morph into this monster that like who the hell is this person and what did you do with my deckhand yeah no i've i've trust me i've seen that happen it happens a lot unfortunately and i i say that from like below deck is unlike any other show because 
you guys really like what I was telling Kate because I used to be a housekeeper with my mom. We like we cleaned mm-hmm. houses forever, so we were actually bonding over. I'm like, I got red wine on the carpet, and she's like, get this and get that, and I was like, you guys. These other people on these other shows don't realize you guys are doing manual labor and you're actually driving the ship and filming yeah. on top of it. And so we have two jobs. Right. But it's like it's all it's all consuming. And I feel like some of these people are like, oh, that's a boring show. I'm like, do you realize not that it is because it's not. But do you realize that they're <laughs> doing manual labor? They're actually taking care of these people and filming a show and living in these tiny quarters. Like this is probably the hardest job there is of all of the shows because they're actually working on top of everything else. Yeah, it's you're filming real people going to a real job. And and, and in such tight quarters, I always wonder because the quarters do look so small, how do, how are the cameramen, how, how do they get in and out of there without being well, there, in the way? We have static cameras. We have static cameras on swivels that are mounted in every one of the uh, crew quarters. Okay. With the exception of mine. There are no cameras <laughs> and no audio allowed in the captain's quarters. Well, that's... Well, that's, that's, that's where the uh, executives always come when they want to have a meeting. I see. That they don't want anyone to hear about. Right. That's where they end up. My room. Hey, Cap, borrow your quarters for an hour or so. So sometimes I feel like you like hanging out with the guests. And other times I feel like you're very annoyed by some of the guests, which I'm annoyed by a lot of the guests. I'm like, do they not realize what Bingo. they signed up for? <laughs> because they know they're on TV and everyone's going to talk shit about them in their confessionals. They do the same thing that the crew members do. As soon as the cameras roll, they morph into this monster. Do you remember Charlie? I'm sure I do. I guess we had on Charlie Waters. He's been on three times. Group of gay guys. And I swear to God, they spend every year that they're, they're running, I think, three years in a row. And as soon as it gets close, it seems like they all caucus together and dream up just crazy stuff that they can do to you know make it everybody's life more difficult like oh the food i'm so hung i i makes me so crazy when they just i'm so hungry we're starving we're the, i'm like okay you've been watching the show obviously and you know that's like it's hard to get the food out so you're just doing what yeah. everyone else is doing i get so angry mm-hmm. with the guests i'm like you guys know you look like idiots right <laughs> like who would well, want to go and pay to look like an asshole we have actually we have actually told some of the guests that, you know, listen, stop trying to be a TV producer. Good. Enjoy your vacation. Do what you were going to do. But stop trying to make those magical, memorable moments because you're not good at it. Right. And it's so obvious. You do your job, which is to be here and have fun. And you can be demanding. Yeah. That's good. Because we're used to that. (laughs) Demanding we can handle. But when you start trying to be a TV producer, it gets a little carried away. And you, I can, and you can tell. But you can sure. tell, like when it happens, or because the, the situations look look coerced and they look phony. Exactly. Like where's where's all the water toys? Where's the slide? We asked for the, like, and they're just like, I don't know. I get annoyed. I just like I want to yell at those people. <laughs> and we haven't even dropped the hook yet, and they want to know why the slide's not out. Oh, I don't know. We're still moving. That might have something to do with it. One of my favorite episodes is when Kate was like, I know you probably got mad at her for this. Um, get the hose. Like, get the hose. Get the hose. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yes, please get the hose. Because that girl was a bitch. Like, get it. But I was. Oh, totally. But I was like, is she, are they? Because she seems serious right now. Like, like she was like oh, yeah. dead serious. And Just hose, hose her down. Oh. Kate, if she would have had it, she'd have turned it on and used it. Oh my God! When did it? There was another time she. What did she do? Oh, it was, it was with Rocky Raquel. Oh yeah, Rocky was nuts. I kind of liked her. She was great TV. Yeah, totally was. And then I found then I found out that she when we found out that she was stooping Eddie in the uh, in the laundry room. Yeah, I felt sorry <laughs> for her on that only because like, I mean, oh, yeah, she set the whole thing up. Well, Eddie had something to do with it. Well, yes. And well, Eddie was, you know, sorry to say this, but Eddie was a little gullible and naive to think that like she would never set him up in a heartbeat. 
Uh, because she knew she knew she was going to reveal it later on in the in the show, and it was going to be a thing. And so she just milked it, and she, I mean. She really did a magnificent job, I thought. I loved watching it, honestly. And then Emil was so cute. And then... But when she jumped overboard, you remember when she jumped overboard? With her with her fins or whatever? No, she didn't have her fin. She, she stripped down because that was after we fired Leon. And she was just, oh, we'll, never, we'll never survive without Leon. And so she takes all her clothes off and she dives off the second deck. I remember. And Kate goes... Forgot her fin. <laughs> Just dry as could be. Forgot her fin. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> and said, well, what do we do? She's swimming away. I said, let her. <laughs> <laughs> but she was very entertaining, I will say. I, I did. Oh, well, she was. Yeah. And I like Eddie, but I was mad at him because of the girlfriend situation. I was a little disappointed. Yeah. That was that was a little tacky, to say the least. He didn't exhibit good judgment. Well, it's also kind of foolish to think that you're going to get away with something like that on a boat because you're you're well, in, and then there's cameras too. He would have gotten away with it had Rocky not brought it up. Well, but that's why you're foolish because I mean this this she's making a splash. <laughs> we never had any cameras before in the laundry room at that point because the hell can happen in a laundry room, right? And if you look at it, it's really, really small. And after about, I don't know, I think a third or fourth season, uh, we found out there's a lot of places that people can go <laughs> that you would never dream of. And the laundry room being just one of them. But ever since then, the laundry room is fully wired. I've no yeah. I've noticed that. We have a lot of shots in the down laundry down, room. Down in, in, yeah. I'm like, hmm. but the bosun's locker, that's a nasty place, but they insist on, uh, for some reason, well, they think they can get away with it there. I did notice on this, I don't, I can't remember. I think it was Captain Sandy was the, on it, but one of the girls went into the shower, like took her microphone off, went into the shower to have a conversation with the other guy, with, with the chef Dave or something so that it wouldn't be on camera. And I'm thinking to myself, Wow, this girl is really smart. Like, why weren't they doing this a long time ago? Because they were having like a very private conversation. They had a little bit, like they tried to catch a little bit of it on the bottom, but we will never know what was said. Yeah, we, we've we solved that issue now. Oh, good to know. If there's, if there's, the bathroom is, the heads are generally off limits. We don't wire them up. There's no audio or video in there. But if one person is in there, whatever it is you're doing in there, we don't care. Well, yeah. It makes absolutely no difference. But if you've got two people in there, that's a party, and we're coming in, and we're coming in with the camera and the microphone, whether you're aware of yours or not. I was shocked she got away with that. I'm like, why were people not doing this, like, this entire, all of these seasons? One of the things we learned on the fly yeah, I mean, I guess there's going to be certain things. And we tell them that up front now, in the very beginning. One person is in there, you're private. Two people are in there, it's a party, and we're going to show it on TV. Oh, fun. So be prepared <laughs> for it. Um, now, do you watch the other Below Decks, uh, the other shows? Marianne and I watched the, uh, the season of uh, Below Deck Down Under. Oh, yeah. With that was Captain good. Jason. And I thought that was pretty good. Below Deck Sailing, I watched season one of this year. And I don't know. I remember when the, uh, the deckhand who was sleeping in captain's quarters. Hmm. See, I would never share quarters with anyone. Yeah, no, I can't imagine that. <laughs> My quarters on a mega yacht are designed that, you know, if there is another person, it's because you invited them in there because there's no extra bunk. Right. You now there's a queen size bed. So the kid gets sick because he's drunk. And this is the first night. They're not even, they haven't even left the dock yet. Everybody has just met everybody like two hours ago. I remember this. 
and they're all hammered. Every one of them is drunker than a four peckered goat. <laughs> and the kid kid gets goes to bed and then goes, uh, uh, "Oh, Cap, I don't feel so well." And they didn't show the part where he hurled all Ooh. over Glenn's room. Poor Glenn. But, well, they made it like it was in his ba- bathroom in the head. Yeah. But then he stumbles out wearing nothing but a T-shirt and a smile, <laughs> still drunk, and goes into the crew crew mess and covers up and falls asleep on the uh, cushions. Oh, my God. I would have... That guy would have been fired. I, like, I... I think Len is the sweetest. <laughs> no big deal. And he said, now go clean up the mess you made. And I thought, yeah, on your way to pack your bags and drag your ass out of here. I feel like Glenn reminds me of like, he's super sweet and he just is such a big pushover. He's just like a, a pushover. And it's like, sometimes I think that he's works. Such a nice guy. So sweet. But like, sometimes you need a leader that's going to break your balls. Like, otherwise, they're going to take advantage of you and things are, you know, Absolutely. he doesn't really get mad at them. He's like, well, as long as work gets done, like, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I, I, I want, you know, we want a leader. And for me, I like sailing yacht, but it, the, the yacht is too small. I, I feel like it's, mm-hmm. I, I, it's too small for me. Still much of that way. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it's hard for me to get into it because I'm like, oh, there's just not enough to see. Do you know what I mean? Well, there's no, above, there's no above deck. Right. Everything's below deck on a sailboat. Yeah, unless you're sailing sideways. I mean, you can definitely tell it, it's um, much more intimate. I, I prefer, like, I like all the shows, but I, I just, I do like, I like you. I like Captain Sandy. I like, like, below deck med. I like all of, the, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I like, I get set in my ways. You know what I mean? I like to watch. And I, and it's hard for me to have, like, new people come on because I'm, I like to see the same people. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that makes the show a success is, especially ours, is the consistency. It used to be just Kate and I and Ben. And that was, that was the core group, which worked really well, really great for a while until it didn't. Right. And then Ben was gone. And then it was Kate and I, and it still worked really well. And when Kate left, I was just like, because nobody told me. Oh. I found out about it in social media. Oh, boy. And then went, and I got Kate on the phone immediately, and I go like, seriously? She probably wasn't allowed to tell you, because you know how they have to keep and everything I, secret, but, I, but I, I feel you. I get that. But I was just like. Probably somebody just cut off my right arm. You lost your anchor. Like you guys, because we, we'd like to have those people. She was so dependable and so funny. And her mind's like a steel trap. Quick. Extremely quick. And if you're going to, if you're going to get into a verbal pissing contest with Kate. You're not going to win. <laughs> if you, if you don't have your A game. Even if you do have your A game, it's not going to help you. Uh, yes. You know, she, she can slice and dice with the best of them. We just did a show together in Scotland, and I got to see that firsthand. And I was oh, I love that show. I mean, I, I've, I've never seen it, but I, just the premise of it, oh, I love it. Just wait. We had there were some hot mic moments with Kate and I and this uh, yeah. somebody else. <laughs> I was highly entertained because I was like, "Oh, she is not missing a beat. She does not. You do not want to go against her like at all. Like that's why I'm glad we were best friends." <laughs> When she told me the name of the show and what was expected, because there were going to be three traders, I thought, Kate, this is so made for you. I said, you are going to, you are just going to shine. There's no doubt in my mind about that. And I can't wait to see it. When when does it come on? It comes on soon, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's coming on on January 12th on Peacock. They're going to just like have all of the episodes. And I will tell you, Kate, like, she does not disappoint. It, like if, I would not have made it without her as my my person because people are so stupid. And I have like I want to just tell them. I'm like, oh my god. She she doesn't have any tolerance for stupid people. No, neither do <laughs> I. So at least we had each other to be like, oh my god, this person's yeah. so fucking stupid. Um, but you need your person to be able to talk to you like that, or we would just look at yeah. each other like, is this person serious? Like. This is and a you're, joke. And you're thinking you and your your mind are same wavelength. Same, same. 
thinking the same thing. And I it's always amazed me with Kate because she will, and I love to watch it because I, I could just sit back and, and watch her in a verbal confrontation every day. I love week. it. And she will insult somebody and they don't get it. <laughs> it takes them a while to process. And I'm just like. And then when they do, the light goes on and they go like, oh, man. <laughs> they just know they've been had. Right. And don't even try to have a comeback because she has the answer all mm-hmm. prepared and it will chew your comeback alive. Like I, I told Andy Cohen, yeah. I'm like better than any housewife read I've ever seen. And that's coming from me. <laughs> and I'm pretty good at reading. So I was like, she's the queen. So Well, you're pretty good yourself, Chad. <laughs> well, game recognized game, though, because I was like, okay, you got this. Uh, it was very impressive. And we had a ton of fun. And I couldn't, have, I would not have survived without her. I really, just some of the idiots that we had to be around, I was like. Yeah, no, she has no tolerance for that at all. It's like listening to you is a waste of my time. No, but we had to fake it. So we were just like, look <laughs> at each other and smile and be like. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, I mean, I thank God I had her. And yes, no, I like, can, I can, I can picture you and her together. Yes, we I really can. We had the best time. And when they told us that we weren't allowed to do something, guess what? We did it because we wanted to make sure we could get away with it. <laughs> and you're not the boss of us. <laughs> Kate, Kate's great at planning stuff like that, too. Just like the time she made me put on that damn Hawaiian suit. Oh, I remember that. Oh, my God. I I, I don't know how. She had to catch me at a weak moment. And I just like, I wanted to get her off my back. So I just agreed to it. I think it was in every commercial for for your season. Like, it was you and the doors and the, I'm like, I've seen it so many times. I'm like, I wonder if his wife is excited about this or not. But. It was, it was so funny because. I was just going to shut her down when she said, it's time to get into your costume. And I said, I'm not wearing that goddamn thing. And she just looked me dead in the eye and she goes, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> and I thought, you know something, maybe I just better make an exception right here and just go ahead and put it on. Yeah, I don't think we want to cross her. I've learned that. Not, I, mm-hmm. I'm not going to cross her. I'm going to keep her on my team. Not in this lifetime. Nope. <laughs> Not doing it. <laughs> well, Captain Lee, it was so nice to talk to you. Ryan's obviously come back on because we have to go, but I, I could talk to you all day. Ryan, we're just getting started. I know. <laughs> well, we'll do this again because I've watched every episode of everything that you've been on and I'm rooting for you and I'm happy you're coming back this season because I was like, I was like crying when you're like, well, I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I will, I will definitely be back because I made a promise when I got off the boat that I was going to come back and those same stairs that I stumbled down going out, I was going to walk back on board without any crutch, without any assistance, and I was going to do it myself. Good for you. That's determination. That's what I worked for. When I came back, I hit physical therapy. I was there four to six hours every day. Wow. Well, you made it, and that makes me very happy, so I don't have to cry anymore. I can watch it again. (laughs) You know, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. I've really, really enjoyed this. And usually, I don't think I've done a podcast with anybody before yet. Oh, my God. Because I, I, I just, because frankly, I just, if I don't like the person, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not doing it. Oh, this is that. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll be good. It'll be good. You'll, you'll, you'll have a lot of fun. I said, no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so good to talk to you. And I'm going to come to Florida for Kate's um, shower. So we'll all get together. I can't wait for that. I'm going to I'm going to press her for the date. But thank you so much. It was an honor to be on your podcast. Ryan, I'm so mad at you. Wait, why? <laughs> because why? you literally like ended our podcast i could have talked okay, to you for five that's hours that's a good point i had to get to the airport though oh. i had to get to the airport like he was in the middle of a start i'm like oh my god i could i literally captain lee could talk to you for all we day. have to get him back because he just wanted to keep talking to you i think and he, i love talking to him i think he really liked i just think well i met him and his wife at BravoCon, and they're so sweet oh you did yeah and he was exactly the same like um 
we were taking pictures with two of the other captains and then he just wanted a picture with just me. He's like, come on, you guys get out of the picture. <laughs> and I just love that he told me, he's like, yeah, we don't need you, get out. I'm like, there He's you just have so it. used to bossing people around. I love he that. Just does. Like we're both bossy. <laughs> yeah. But I would let, he would boss me, he'd be the boss of me. You, you would let that very, happen? Well, very few people are, but like yeah. I have so much respect for him that yeah. I would listen. Uh, and it's good and to he's know. he's actually always right. <laughs> like smart, he's not, so he's like, a smart guy. I would fire everyone that he's fired. Oh, really? I, there's not really one time where I disagreed with him. Wow. Kate was a bully one time on the show and she didn't get in that much trouble, but I talked to her about it. She's like, yeah, not the best. I should have like, done that. What do you feel that way about the other captain's decisions? I don't. I like, I love Captain Sandy though. I feel like she, like she's a very good at bringing up, they have a completely different vibe. Okay. Like she likes to bring up the crew and give them chances. And I okay. think that's very sweet. They just... They completely do it differently, but Sandy's not afraid. Of Does she get fucked over because of that kind of thing? No. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. She's a badass. Don't okay. be wrong. Okay. She, they just do it differently. Got it. She will fire you with a smile and a hug. And, like <laughs> you won't know what's happening. <laughs> okay. But she does give more chances and she wants to bring up the crew and actually teach them. I mean, about, that's sweet. That, yeah, no. She's that's like, how she, you grow in your position. They do it you differently, know? but okay. I like right. both of those captains very, very much. And we did learn. That he is still on the show, back guys. on the show, though. So that's so the exciting. rumors are incorrect, and he shall return, yep. which makes my heart happy and sing. Um, all right, guys. So that is it. Be sure and uh, watch Traders January twelfth on Peacock. It's gonna be a fun hustle. And if you don't know what she's talking about, go watch the trailer now, right now, on my Instagram and TikTok and oh, wherever. What? I can't remember what interview it was. I just wanted to bring this up because no. we do we talked. Oh, we talked about being good. You being a fun drunk. Yeah. And that was with you when you talked to Andre, which will be right next, next yeah. week. Next What's week. Problem? Right. Where are you so, going with this? Let me just say. So I asked someone on my team to let's re-air an old episode. They went through like 400 episodes of the show. Not okay. I can already tell. <laughs> and the one that they chose that they thought was the funnest was you and I getting drunk in the studio. <laughs> no, no, it was in the studio. After recording your audiobook, we oh. got drunk in the studio. And we just hit record and we chatted for like, <laughs> I don't really remember it. I don't either. I think we both had to Uber home. Oh, for sure. I left my car there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, apparently, well, are we re-airing that? Is that what you're we me? It, it already did. It just happened oh, without asking. But the second perfect. part of that episode is it's in the feed somewhere. I am a fun drunk. I don't. Yeah, I, I think it's proof of it. That, I think it's proof of it. Well, great. Thanks for letting me in on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right, haiku? we gotta go. Um, a haiku. Yes. About about captain. But, yeah. Oh, captain, my captain. Oh, Captain, my captain, the man of the sea. You're my captain. I want you alone with me. <laughs> oh, Captain, my captain. captain. <laughs> That's it. That sounded creepy, <laughs> but I liked it. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Brandy Glanville Unfiltered. Download new episodes every week. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And be sure to leave us a rating and review. And while you're at it, check out some of the other great shows available on Straw Hut Media.